Let's get started. You guys look ready to go. So welcome. My name is Sarah. I'll be leading this class today uh, so that you are aware this format is 45 minutes. So I leave you at the end of class. I leave you in Shavasana. Um, I'll put on some music again. And I invite you to stay if you, if you have 5, 10, 20 more minutes to just chill out. Don't feel like you have to hop up and turn off your device. OK, I close the meeting and everything. So um, or I turn the cameras off so, you, so you'll have your space and time to, to linger as long as you like. Um, and today I'm really happy. It's really fun when I can do this. I'm going to be spotlighting another uh, student. It's Melissa. Uh, she's uh, an outdoors on her yoga mat. So she will actually be demoing the class. Uh, I love this form and it really helps me to keep my eyes on you guys and be more directly involved in your practice. Um, so, so you can't see her yet, but I'll switch the spotlight to her in just a moment once we get moving and grooving. Um, so yeah, so just so you're aware. Thank you, Melissa. She's, uh, she's in our yoga teacher training program right now, too, that we're doing some online hours. So it's been really nice to have some online stuff. All right, cool. So let's start in a comfortable seat. Sit up tall and just start by rolling your neck, you guys. Let the neck tip or the head rather tip to one side. Breathe into the side that you're opening and then curl it down. You can go chin tucks to the chest. And you go up the other way and you know it's really self-guided neck rolls right letting the the um inner part of the body guide the shape that you make yeah in any spots if you start to roll and you're like oh wow there's something there <laughs> perhaps just pause there stop the movement hold and breathe so this is where the breath is is such a you know it's why breath is such a compliment to the yoga practice is we're able it gives us that power to really create deep lasting change in our shape in our function of our body especially if you have like a chronic injury or something that comes up a lot cool and then when you're ready find your center hands are comfortable on your lap eyes are closed and just start to breathe in a way that enlivens the entire space of your ribs. And so you think of this expansive breath that's not only forward, right? You can open the collarbones, let the chest open, but also, you guys, you want to think dynamically here. The ribs open sideways, even open backwards, up and down, and it's a sphere. It's like a pumping heart, right? There on all sides, there's movement, there's vibration there's energy and so it starts with visualization you just picture the breath having that chance to really embody the whole space of the, of the thoracic cavity then as long as you're not pregnant start to hold the breath at the top and at the bottom so it's the four part breath we call it the inhale get as full as you can really exaggerate the lift the expansion hold it at the top for a couple of moments and then very similar as you exhale you try to get all the air out even compress the low belly in and up creating that bonda and then hold it out for just a moment it's just this up and down this high to low in and out And it's like exercising the heart when that we put pressure, when we, it's the same reason you lift a weight and you do a few reps to, to put pressure on the muscles and the bones to have resistance, they get stronger. The cavity of the heart, you know, we're, we're gonna challenge it today through the practice. We challenge it and then out of that, you guys, you want the heart to grow bigger. It gets stronger, more resilient, both physically and even energetically our capacity to have love, to share love, to be love. Bring your hands to your heart in prayer. Let the head come down a little bit, chin tucks. And I invite you to set your own intention for your practice today. One word or short phrase that, that brings you into the deeper meaning of why you're here on the mat. Holding that in the heart, inhale, start to reach your arms above your head. Go super high. Yeah, lengthen the belly, open up your throat, baby back bend. And then exhale, behind all fours, bring your hands to the ground, super soft at first, and then slide them forward and wide. 
step, uh, take the knees back and adjust if you used a prop for your seat and you get it out of the way so you have some space for your practice. <laughs> Start to move on your own here, side to side, up and down. It could be a cat cow or some variation thereof. If closing the eyes gives you more sensitivity, I invite you to do so. Now here's the special thing about this dynamic power flow, you guys, is as we start to get into some things, uh, I'll be mixing it up a little bit, some, some more traditional movements that I know a lot of us are more accustomed to, and then some challenge, some, some, some of the effort towards the, towards the dynamism. Um, so get the ribs so big, then find center, all fours, tip your head to the left, and let the right hand get light by lifting the ribs away from the floor. Now the right hand might even come slightly off the floor. And then try the other side, hand, right hand down, tip your head way to the right, and then hover the left hand by lifting up through the rib cage. Okay, so try that a few times and initially make it less about going for a nice deep stretch, which I know a lot of us love and do. Instead, we're starting with functionality. Okay, so this is so good for the wrist. You gotta learn how do my ribs filling actually make the, lighten the load on my wrists, okay? And we're going to translate that into a lot of different asana, where sometimes it can feel like there's a lot of pressure on the wrist. We're going to take that away by filling the ribs. Yeah, so good. Now let's do downward dog. Come to the center, plant the hands firmly, curl your toes under, elevate the pelvis, and stretch your legs out. A few breaths here, free movement. You might paddle out your feet. Swivel the hips, uh, swivel the hips side to side a little bit like you're wagging your tail or any other movements that, that you know and love that bring you into the presence of the heart. Mm -hmm. So good, you guys. And now from this dog, I'm going to ask you to step your feet wider than the yoga mat and just start to walk your hands backward towards your feet dangle, bend the knees a little, hold your elbows, ragdoll with really wide legs, and then as you, rag, as you ragdoll, let the ribs open on the sides. So you might think of it a bit like a gorilla, right? You're getting the armpits hollow, you're making space in the ribs, and then of course the, the, the added benefit of gravity helping to stretch your back. Yes, good. Now, please bend your knees, you guys, and come on up, put your hands on your knees. So you're kind of like an outfielder pose, right? You're sort of resting a little bit. And I want you to really work an untuck of the pelvis. So the feet stay really wide. Your hands are on your knees. I want you to broaden the pelvic floor. Yeah, make it super duper wide. Then start to stand on up, mountain pose, step the feet narrow onto your yoga mat. Yeah. Pull a little movements, inhale, arms up to the sky, stretch out the belly all the way up through the crown. Exhale, hands to your heart. Do a few like that, just a mountain pose. Inhale, arms around and above the head, get a full stretch. Exhale, hands to the heart, yeah. And again, inhale, arms around and up. Yeah, thanks Mary, super helpful. And exhale, hands to the heart. Good. Now push your arms out in front of you, you guys, and as the hands go forward, push your ribs backwards. And I'm going to actually ask you to tuck your chin again. I want you to think of lifting from the back of your ribs up. It's kind of like curling up. Yeah. Now keep that and start to bend the knees and sit towards chair pose, opening up your throat too, keeping the arms just there on the horizon. They're not going to go up quite yet. Yeah, now again, really widen your pelvic floor. Yeah, widen so much that there's, an, oh, there's a sitting back into your own dynamic power, yeah. Now, um, as you stand back up to mountain pose, arms lower, but the ribs rise. So it's like you're pumping the spine. Exhale again, sit down. We're gonna repeat that a few times with breath. Exhale, rooting. Inhale, rising, the arms lower, but the ribs rise. So if I was with you in person, here's a keep going, you guys. What I would do is I would hold your wrists. I would put my hands below them. And in the part where you're rising up to mountain pose, I would have you push down super strong until your triceps tone. That's the movement, you're getting it. Yeah, good, good, good. Now keep that type of movement and then take the hands and hold the sides of your head. Yeah, hold the sides of the head, we call these ecstasy arms. Do the same thing, exhale, sit down, lift, lifting the ribs. 
Inhale, baby back bend as you rise up, lay back into the hands into the skull. Yeah, really good, everybody. Now, everybody bring your elbows more narrow, like they're pointing forward. That way, the ribs on the back side that I asked you to open earlier, you want those to stay full. So that's the, the, the kind of trick to this dynamism is the ribs don't collapse on the back side. You don't pinch. Yeah, that's better. Good. Yeah, nice, Robert. Next time you're at the top of it, tip over to the right. So the right ear is going to go to the right shoulder. And then come back to center, sit down in the middle, inhale, arc up and over to the left side. Do that a few times. Exhale, you're doing basically a chair pose holding the skull. Inhale, arcing to the other side, switching off. And think of this, you're pumping the body. It's peristalsis. It's what your intestines do to digest food and waste and all this stuff. You're squeezing and pumping the body here. Yeah. Now keep doing this. And I'm going to ask you to hover your heels barely off the floor and go a little slower. And that will lighten the load on the feet. And guess what? It's going to wake up your back body. It's called the posterior chain of muscles. Yeah, good, Joan. Really narrow the elbows, you guys. The ribs get fuller that way. Yeah, exactly. When the elbows go far back, they tend to pinch and close. That's it. This is called crescent. Good. Next time you're um, in the center, free the hands. Inhale, mountain pose. Stand up. Let's do a little vinyasa flow. Inhale, arms to the sky. Sun A. Tug the low belly in. Exhale, forward fold by way of hinging at your hips. Inhale, lift halfway, lengthen the spine. Exhale, step or hop to plank pose. And we'll hold the first one. Sorry for the background noise. We'll hold the first plank for just a brief moment. Now, think of the ribs I taught you about, right? Fill the ribs like crazy on the back side. Yeah. Then on the inhale, pull the heart forward just about an inch. Exhale, bend your elbows backwards. That's your chaturanga. Legs stay strong. Inhale, upward dog. Point the toes. Hug the heels energetically towards each other, lifting through your crown. Exhale, please, downward facing dog for just a few deep breaths. Always, there's always an option for child's pose if, if you'd like to simplify or modify the practice. That's it, you guys. Staying in your dog, I invite you to just slightly bend your knees. And through the bend of the knees, just like I had you do in the squat or asked you to do in the squat, through the bend of the knees, make your pelvis wider. Dilate it, right? Spread your sitting bones. Work it. Glutes mound up. Then from that, keeping that, let the legs get longer. They can go towards straight, being thoughtful, not to hyperextend, right? Yeah. On the inhale, you guys lift your heels up really high. Let the toes get a good stretch. Exhale, bend your knees, step or lightly hop to the front of your mat. Go light. Yeah, Melissa. Inhale, half lift, stretch your spine out nicely. Exhale, enjoy the fold. Inhale, standing up, raising the arms super high. Baby back bend if you're ready for it here. Exhale, hands simply come to the heart center. Remembering that intention you set. Let's do it again. Inhale, arms out and up. Little back bend if you wish. Exhale, hinge at the hips. As you fold, keep the glutes turned on strong. Strong booty. <laughs> yeah, that's the magic. Inhale, lift halfway. Exhale, directly to chaturanga. Step or hop back with bent elbows. Yes, inhale, up dog. Nice, exhale, downward dog. Yeah, take a few breaths. And again, yeah, I saw a little bit of variations. I love that, you guys. You, you know your practice. If you want to add anything on, modify, change it up, please, I don't mind at all. <laughs> I'm here to share and hold space. And, and I, I, just, I just love that we get to do this together. All right, one more full breath here. Really work the exhale on that one. Let it all the way out. Use the inhale, lift your heels up high. Exhale, bend the knees, step or hop to the hands. Go light. Inhale, lift halfway, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, forward fold, Uttanasana. Inhale, rise up, raise the arms up, get a full stretch. Then we're gonna cross the right arm underneath the left, eagle the arms. If a full cross is too much, you can just hold opposite shoulders, self-hug. Again, bend the knees, sit back similar to chair. And then dig, drag, hover the right leg and cross it over the left. Yeah, full cross if you can. If that's too much. You could do a figure four where the ankle lands above the knee. Okay, we're going to pulse this today, okay? So as we did before, same thing. Exhale, sit down, get low. Now inhale like you're doing a chin up with your eagle arms. Start to pull and even look up, opening the belly. Yeah, do a few like that. And it's so cool. I love eagle arms because guess what? You can't close off your back heart. <laughs> 
as you're pumping, since your arms are bound in front of you, this area of the back ribs that I was asking you to keep open and those other pulses we were doing, it kind of has to stay open, right? <laughs> Good. Now let's do a nesting eagle. This one's so nice. You're going to crunch all the way in, bring the elbows to the knees, and really get a, there's a big excessive C curve here. So yeah, not quite a dynamic pose, but certainly cleansing. Really good for the lymph nodes, you guys, to get these main areas of the armpits and the inner thighs compressed. One more breath here. Ooh. Nice, come out slowly, unravel the eagle, raise your arms up super high, go full stretch, breathe in a lot. Let me go left arm under the right, of course, crisscross below. Feel free to do a self hug as an alternative. If shoulders are tight, sit low on the exhale, dig and drag, hover the left leg and cross it all the way over the right as tightly as you can, or figure four. Okay, pump it, exhale, sit down. Inhale, do a chin up, pull up. Keep going, I'll give you some more hints with this. So even as you're going up, even as you're rising to the little back bend practice, keep rooting the hips down, okay? So you're actually making the spine longer. The, the two don't move in the same, they don't stay together, if you will. You're pumping, you're trying to pull apart. It's like a Chinese finger trap. You know that tensegrity you get in the center? You're building that and then it will curvature of your low lumbar all the way through the belly. Then we'll do compression when you feel equal. Let's go down to nesting eagle. Curl all the way and you do let the back round on that one. Nesting, sometimes teachers call it sleeping eagle. Yeah, and so good. You get maybe you touch elbows to knees. If you don't quite connect, that's okay. Get as close as you can and squeeze into yourself. Big breath here. And we'll take our time, come out slow, thoughtful to how the left foot returns to the earth. Inhale, arms can rise up. Exhale, forward fold, hinge at your hips. Bring the hands to touch the earth. Cool, let's flow. Inhale, lift halfway, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana, step or hop back. Option to skip, by the way, if you're nursing a shoulder injury or something, just push back to down dog and meet us there. All right, let's do some vinyasa flow. Lift your right leg up, bend the knee, and just do some movements. Just do some movements, you guys. Let the right hip get warmed up. You can open the hip, you can close it, circle the ankle. Keep the hands really steady, right? Notice the ribs, if you can keep them full and lofty, like an apple bobbing in water, chances are the wrists will feel a lot less compression. Cool. Square the hips and straighten the right leg. So you're basically doing the splits. And then on an exhale, slide the foot in between your two hands for crescent pose or crescent lunge rather. Inhale, arms rise. We'll take five or so breaths here. Yeah, keeping the eyes on the horizon and, and picture it, you guys, as if the thoracic, you know, as if it's being embraced on all sides, right? It's like a swaddling. It's like a baby. When a baby is swaddled, that's why it can relax. It can sleep. It can, it, it's, it's calmer in a swaddling. So you, we energetically hug in and then out of that, you guys let the heart get bigger on all sides. Yeah, then do cactus arms. We'll do a little back bend to finish off the pose. Let the heart lead the way up and then back. Yeah, open the throat. Tone all the muscles of your legs, front and back. Fantastic, and a simple twist is next. So we'll come down, put the left hand on the mat, on the inside of the right foot, and twist your right arm to open up towards the sky. Yeah, just a real simple twist, yeah. Yeah, try to pull the left shoulder a little bit back there, Robert. Yeah, yeah, yeah. T shoulders have a tendency to kind of slouch sometimes, so we want to think instead, you know, expansive and safe. Roll the right wrist, do a couple circles with those since the right hand's up in the air. Yeah, and maybe even flick imaginary water, charge the hand. Yeah, and then we'll do chaturanga. You can do one legged if you like that. Place the hand, step back, <clears throat> maybe hover the leg, but either way, have it down for up dog. You want to have the back equally supported. So both legs are on the earth for up dog and exhale downward. So you've seen dog, so good. Left leg, lift that guy up, bend it, open it, pump it, circle. Breathe. Really good, you guys. Equalize the hips, straighten the leg, let it feel like the splits, really work the, head, uh, the leg high. And then use an exhale to step through. Bend the knee. 
place the foot in between your hands. Inhale, rise up, crescent on the left side. And it's the, the succulent part of the practice is the, the growth, not only the physical, which step one is, is awesome about the yoga practice, but the energetics, right? Our heart literally gets stronger, not just in a physical way, because a little cardio we do get from the yoga, but, but we're more connected to it, right? We challenge it. We, we let the love energetically grow through the whole body. Please cactus your elbows. Try not to go too far too soon, right? Think of it just like when you're climbing, you pull up, then you arc back. Keep the legs super steady, especially that back right leg that might tend to take a nap. Inhale once more here. And then use the exhale, place the right hand on the ground below the shoulder and twist your left arm, open it up to the sky. Your gaze ideally would follow the hand, but if that's a lot of pressure on your neck, Soften the gaze to, to be less up and maybe more just to the side of you. Yeah. Just listening every moment, listening to your body. Do some left wrist rolls. Maybe notice some quicks and pops. I know mine is. <laughs> and then flick that imaginary water. Really energize every little muscle in the hand wrist area. Super duper, let's do our chaturanga. Take the hand, step back, one-legged option. Just make sure you replace it before you do your up dog. Yeah, nice, you guys, good, good, good. Downward dog, take a few breaths. Know that, of course, your child's pose is optional here. Deep breaths, tugging in at the lower belly, keeping that bonda engaged to support the spine and support a full breath. Fun, all righty. Lift your heels high, bend your knees, step or float to the hands, have the feet a few inches apart, about inner hips. Inhale, take half lift. Exhale, enjoy the fold. And we'll go chair pose, bend the knees, arms up, chair pose with a little space between the feet intentionally. Yeah, that's really good, you guys. Now there's this distance from opposite hips to opposite shoulder that we're gonna play with. So I want you to sit deep, sit deep, deep, deep. Let the pelvis be wide, let the back be naturally curved, and then reach the arms over to the right. Let the left ribs grow bigger. And then go to the other side. And so you'll feel the obliques tone. So you're getting a little side crunch and the legs are obviously working. Really use your buns, not just your quadriceps, use the back legs. And as you're going side to side, try to pull, you're pulling these ribs away from the opposite or away from the hip, away from its own hip. <laughs> so as you arc to the right, left ribs move away from the left hip and vice versa or same on the other side, right ribs move away. Let the head tips so there's not too much aggression in the neck. You're getting it. Yeah, really good, Joan. Fun. Mountain pose, stand up tall, let the arms relax by your sides. And from here, just do some shoulder rolls, please. Um, it's kind of easy, especially if you're a little bit newer to my classes. Some of these moments are really easy to overtake the neck. And I don't want you to do that. You really got to liquefy the neck and let much deeper, you know, core and rib cage muscles do a lot of this work. Cool. Nice, next pose, let's work our dancers. So lean weight into your left foot, lift the right leg up and grab the ankle with your hand, okay? Left arm out in front of you or even slightly upward, okay? Narrow the knees, keep the hips square, just like crescent lunge pose and kick back and hinge at the hips a bit. Now, option one, I want you to just stay here. Take a few breaths, work on holding balance. Option two, they're called rebounds. So that means you bend the left knee, the bottom one just a little bit and you hinge at the hips and see how close the left hand might be able to touch the earth. Doesn't have to go all the way down unless you want. <laughs> Inhale, come back up and do about three or four. Yeah, yeah, and the more you sit into the hips, this is where sitting into the hips is super helpful. Melissa's doing a great demo. I know she's shaded, but it's a really good example. Even though, no, no, she, I made her wobble, <laughs> but the more you sit back, you guys, like I'm teaching you, it's, it's, so, it's so much easier. Yeah, like that. Cool. Inhale, let's come back to center. Let's pause and mountain pose and, and just enjoy the energetics of the heart, even through occasional frustration and confusion. 
And before we do the other side, let's do this one thing that I think will help us all. So, so bend your knees like chair pose and put your hands on the top part of your thighs. So yeah, like that. So, so yeah, all the way up kind of near the groins, right by the creases. Yeah. And I just want you to push that down. Yeah, just push down. And what I want you to feel is how the, the, the femur bones, these are your femur bones, they're moving towards your hamstrings. Okay. Now keep that now wide in the pelvis, but let your butt stick out a little bit. Now, not to overarch the back, keep the back healthy curve, but, but root. So that's what I want you to do for rebounds. Let's try the left side. Lean into the right foot, grab the left ankle, extend your right arm out long, open up the belly. Please feel free to work here. Alternatively, bend the knees. Imagine where you were just touching your legs, that's gonna root back. The butt gets wide, so the hinging at the hips has more power to it. That's what this is. Yeah, yeah, you're finding it. And if it's a little weird, it's normal. <laughs> yeah. Sit wide. That's so good. Yeah, Eileen, on it. Nice. Last moment here. <sighs> Super good. Inhale, stand back up. Mountain pose. Take a moment. Pause and feel. Feel the feet on the ground. The wind of the breath moving through the lungs. Ever, ever getting bigger. All right, let's build a little more heat, please. Inhale, arms to the sky. Sit the hips back, exhale, forward fold. A little more flow. On the inhale, half lift. Exhale, step or hop back. Take your flow, chaturanga, or please just meet us in downward dog. It's a great option. Yes, so good. When you get back there, let's go right leg up again. Do any free movement that feels good right now for a couple breaths. And then again, straighten your leg and square your hips so it'll feel like you're doing the splits. Cool, crescent lunge again, bend your knee, place it in between your hands, inhale, rise up. Warrior two, spin out the arms to the sides, left heel spins in, toes point towards the long edge of the mat on the back leg, yeah. Gaze at the horizon towards the right hand. Good. Inhale, reverse your warrior so you can keep the legs as they are and just tip up and back with that right arm. And very similar to that other stuff, think of that distance, right hip to right armpit, elongating. Yeah, let's do side angle. Put your right elbow on your knee and your left arm overhead at an angle. If you'd like a little more depth, you can put your right hand to the earth. Or that's where that yoga block, if you have one, might be helpful somewhere in the middle. Put, put, put the right hand on a block as an option. Yeah. And then take, take the arm all the way above your head. So, so the left palm is going to rotate towards the ground. Yeah, like that, like that. Yes. One more breath. <laughs> Those dogs always come into your class. <laughs> and then we'll take a little flow, frame the front foot, step the right leg back. Option for that one-legged challenge, should you choose it. Both legs are down for up dog. Keep the back stabilized. Downward facing dog comes after that. And of course, just the left side right away. Bend the knee, open the hip, do some free movement. Keep the ribs full so the hands are not compressed, so the wrists are not, wrists are not compressed. And straighten the legs, square the hips, try to do the splits. Mm -hmm. Good. Bend the knee, place the foot in between your hands. Again, inhale, just one breath into crescent. And open up to warrior two. Pause, we'll be here for a bit. Ensure that left knee is above the ankle. Yeah, good, Robert, just like that. And it's helpful, a visual reference for warrior two is visually, if you, could, if you look down at your left foot, you would be able to see your big toe inside your knee, right, versus outside. And that's a good sign that you've done what we call enough external rotation of the left hip for this to be safe on the knee. And then inhale, reverse your warrior, float left palm up and back, legs stay the same, try to stay low in the hips, yes. You guys are so strong. Got an extended side angle, so as the elbow goes on the leg, your right arm doesn't go to the sky, that's one version of it, but let's go all the way above the head. And so when you do that, the right palm will actually rotate to face the earth. So it's very, it's the same arms of Urdhva Hastasana, which is um, mountain pose when the arms are above your head, the palms face each other. It's like that, but just one arm. I hope I didn't over complex that. <laughs> Little twist of the heart, one more breath. 
We'll take the flow, place the hands, friends, step back, float the leg optionally as you move through. Go ahead and take a few breaths here. Child's pose optional. Notice and observe the energy of the heart. You can even picture that the green is the color that, that represents the heart chakra in, um, in the chakra charts. And you can even picture it, you guys. A visualization is so powerful. Visualize the, your favorite color of green. And it's not just stuck there in the heart, not moving. It's, it's fluid. It's expanding. It's maybe even swirling through the body or through your space in your home. Your unique energy of, of love. Okay, let's inhale. Lift the heels up high. Exhale. Bend your knees. Step or hop to the hands. Inhale, lift halfway, have a little space between your feet. Exhale, enjoy a little fold. Let's actually stay in this fold. Separate the feet pretty wide. Peace fingers on your big toes. Parangustasana. Inhale, take a little lift halfway. You can stretch the arms. And then exhale, fold into it. Bend the elbows, widen the elbows, and even push your elbows more forward, like away from your body. So again, the ribs on the back side get, get full. So it's kind of, you kind of feel like a gorilla a little bit. Yeah, elbows can bend more, Eileen, and then push forward towards the door in front of you. Let the head relax. And we'll articulate the spine. So bend the knees, unhook, curl, slowly come up. We'll do one slow roll up, one vertebrae. Engage your core. Once you are up, start the pose, reach the arms up wide and high, baby back bend, engage your core. And exhale, release the arms by your side, step the feet a little bit closer together for figure four pose. Cross ankle squat. So lift the right leg and cross the ankle just above the left knee and bend the knees and sit back. Good. The hands can first just land on the leg itself. Yeah. If you want a little more depth, before you go any lower with the chest, widen your, your pelvis. Basically, I'm saying stick your butt out a little more. Yeah, that'll help the back stay more naturally curved. If you want more, start to hinge deeper. Deeper, deeper. You might touch blocks. You might touch the floor. Maybe if you have a counter or a couch in your body, you could touch that. Um, but keep the right foot super active. The ankle flexed. When the right foot is active, which is easy to forget here since it's in the air, it might tend to sleep. You keep that foot active, you guys, the, the knee will be so much safer in, in any type of pose like this. Yeah, very good. Yeah, like that. On the inhale, we'll slowly come back up and we'll switch out the legs. So land the right foot real soft. Dig, drag, hover the left leg, cross the ankle above the right knee. And pay attention to, as you go, go for it, go for your stretch, but pay attention to the orientation of your pelvis. So the end of class, you guys, in just a few minutes, we're gonna be laying down. And very similarly, we're gonna notice what, what's my pelvis doing when I'm doing some floor asanas. And, and tendency, especially in this pose too, is to really scoop the tailbone under. So, um, and uh, often because it's, it makes it easier to go further, right? Instead, back off a little bit, wide in the pelvis, right? Make your seat big, then hinge at the hips. And the benefits, you guys, is a much greater degree of, of stretch um, and power. And it's like molding your body to, to be open, to be strong, like, like a sumo wrestler, right? There's a width behind you holding you, whether you're in a fold, whether you're in a handstand or, you know, whatever practice you're, you're working on, progressing, there's space, there's power. That's it. On the inhale, we'll slowly start to rise back up. I'm going to ask you to just face the long edge of your mat. No rush. Step your feet real wide and turn your toes out. And again, put your hands on your knees and lean forward like you did earlier. Yeah. Really get into the hips, you guys. Go a little side to side. Wag your tail, we call it. Or kind of like a slow motion swooshing of a beautiful skirt. And you want to show all the fabric off. Really widen. And then try to do, if you can, figure eights with your hips. <laughs> Unless you're a professional dancer, <laughs> doing figure eights might feel a little complex and confusing. It's so fun to play with the brain. Now, if possible, retrace the figure eight, go the weird way, and let your hips get really confused about what they're doing in space. Yeah. Good. Now, keeping the toes turned out, lift the hands and bring them down to the floor. 
hands to the earth, slide them out in front of you a bit. Now fill the ribs and start to pull forward, take the shoulders above the wrists. And then as you exhale, sit back, bend the knees and sit wide. You would inhale, pull forward again. So you're getting ready to jump, if you will. So think about that, the dynamics of jumping here. That's the dynamic power. Yeah, what would you need to do? And then when ready, start to actually take some hops. Maybe towards a frog handstand, but that's not necess necessary, okay? You could just do one inch off the ground with your feet and land again. And the, the, the yes, Joan, so good. The energy of this is not performance-based. Can I do a handstand? Really, who cares? It's can even in a precarious upside down situation, can I be alert and tuned in to my pelvic floor power, just like you are in your lunges and your flows? The ribs stay full. Yes. Ah, good, you guys. From here, start to rise back to standing nice and slow so you don't get too, too much of a head rush <laughs> and step to the front of your space. Nice work. Place your hands on top of your heart. You do one hand on top of the other. Close your eyes and just notice the vibrational energy. And as the hands are on top of the heart, I actually want you to push your hands into the heart, like push, push onto yourself. And then out of that, push the, the heart forward into the hands. And that's the resilience, resiliency we're building is, is due to the pressure, due to the resistance. We get stronger in here. We can handle more. We can share more love now more than ever. So important. Nice, you guys calmly find your way, if you're not already, to the front of your space, arms by your sides. We're going to flow to get to the earth. On the inhale, stretch your arms up super high. Keep the pelvis open as you exhale, forward fold, hinging at your hips. Inhale, lift halfway. Exhale, final chaturanga, step or jump through, taking your flow. Final one, at least of this class anyway. Maybe you'll do more later today. <laughs> Really good. And from your downward dog, either step or jump through to a seat mm -hmm. and then lay down onto your spine. Yeah, lay down onto your back, all the way back. Nice. Once you're laying down, just draw the knees into your chest and in your own favorite way, no rules here, just let yourself kind of roll and, and, and do, do what feels good uh, at first. <laughs> and then, then once you do a little feel good, I'm gonna invite you to do something a little more challenging. Okay, yeah, thank you, Mary, that helps a lot. So now keep your right leg with you and let's go left leg long on the ground. So wind removing pose, you might know this one. Yeah, cool, start with a little bit of what we know. Now, guess what? Your pelvis is probably pretty tucked, right? Because a moment ago you were rolling. So what I want you to do is keep the legs, keep them strong, even engage that left leg more, like flex the left foot, push the heel into the ground and try to untuck your tailbone. So what would happen is your belly would actually arc up towards your left thigh. Yeah, so I'm gonna ask you to keep that and notice what happens when that occurs, when pelvis is open versus tucked, your left thigh will root more towards the earth. And that's what we're going for. We wanna calm the nervous system by rooting the thighs. And see if you can keep that as you do a hamstring stretch. So allow the right leg to lengthen. You can either hold the leg bound and release fingers behind the right thigh, maybe hold a little higher if you're really mobile and you do this a lot, but then tune into the low lumbar. If it's flat on the ground, we actually don't want that long term, right? Temporary, it's not the end of the world, but to build dynamic power, we actually want to encourage natural curvature. So keeping the hamstring stretch, root the thigh, so push your thigh away from you and into that pull with the hands back. So again, it's like the heart exercise we did a second ago. There's an internal push pull very intentional isometrics to bring about something that didn't exist before roll the right ankle a couple times point flex spread the toes crinkle the toes fantastic and we'll just take this into a real simple twist nothing fancy bend that knee hold it with the left hand and cross your body opening the arm out to the side. Take a few breaths, try to soften a bit more into this one. Notice the radiance of the ribs. Let the breath be like drinking your favorite beverage or you know, devouring your favorite sweet treat. <laughs> Oh my gosh. 
other side, coming back to center. Readjust your hips. They may have gotten a little crooked on that, so make sure you feel centered. And then we'll go left side, wind removing first. So before we do the hamstring stretch, let's just pull the knee in and orient your pelvic floor for openness. And so another cool thing about this, this you guys, is the low belly gets opened. So you can think of that space from, <laughs> from the belly button to the pubis. <laughs> Sorry, the, I love the animals we get in the Zoom <laughs> classes. Uh, from the yeah, so just try to open the belly, and if you, if you tip the pelvis open versus tuck, right thigh will root more easily, and that directly affects your nervous system. It's a calming effect. Then it's a rewiring effect. Go ahead, find that hamstring stretch, and um, as you find it, similarly, you know, again, work the curve of the low lumbar and the fullness of the ribs. But it's you know the patterns that we make every day. That's why it's so effective. You know, it doesn't have to be, you know, five hours of, of, of practice all day long. We do these short, intentional, thoughtful practices, and your body starts to really realign itself for power, for openness. Uh, it's, it's just so, so cool that we can do that. And then we'll bend the knee, you guys, and take your way to a twist, crossing the body. You know, think about that kind of stuff, the, the neuroplasticity, right, of the mind, the, the, the things we do every day, we're, we're building the patterns, right, and we notice maybe that pattern's not serving me, maybe that pattern's creating some low back pain or, or what, what have you, um, and, and we just, we take charge, we, we know that we can make the decision to empower ourselves for our best wellness and health. Big breaths here, you guys, all the way in and all the way out. Fantastic, and we'll take it to happy baby. So when you're ready, come on back to center. Hold the feet. If the feet are a little too far, hold the backs of the knees, sway. Again, the tail will probably wanna tuck a lot here. So I invite you to try to work it untucked. Open the pelvis, root the thighs, even against the resistance of the, of the bind of the hands and feet, or hands and knees. Good, and stretching out, prepping for your Shavasana. Take a moment to grab anything you need that'll support this restful time. Maybe it's placing something over your eyes or you know, putting a blanket on your belly. Yeah, and we assimilate the information that the practice gives us and that's as much equally important as doing it, giving the body time to, to observe and notice the energy of the heart, the shift of the pelvic floor. <laughs> I invite you to, do, to let go, disconnect from any breath control and practice what we call turtle breathing. It's the complete absence of breath control. It's so slow. There's no effort. I invite you to stay here as long, as long as you need. I'll be turning on some music to support uh, holding space. Again, no rush to get up. Give yourself all the time that you need. And then thank you so much for being here and I look forward to next week. Have a beautiful day. Reach out anytime if you need anything. Namaste.